is the opposite result of what God really wants to happen in your life. He'd rather sweetness come, but some people turn bitter. I think of jo- Jonah. Jonah was a little bit bitter. God was working on him, but I think the book of Jonah was not necessarily about being, you know, just the, the, the story, neat story about a whale and, and a man and, and people getting saved. No, it's showing how God was trying to get through the hard heart, you could say, of a Christian. Someone that knew him. And God was trying to, to teach him how he needed to have a softer heart. How do you establish your heart or your feelings? Let's look at the Bible of those who succeeded. Let's look at Joshua 4, chapter 24, verse 15. Joshua, chapter 24, verse 15. And I'm sure if you've read your Bible much, you, you'll be familiar with Joshua. Joshua 24, verse 15. It says, it, Joshua got all the people together and he, he told them, he said, look, he said, and if it seem evil to you to serve the Lord... Choose you this day whom ye will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You know what the first thing you need to do is make a choice. Not just say, yeah, okay, yeah, you're right. Well, these days I'll make that choice. No, today. Choose this day whom you're going to serve. Now, you know what most of the time the choice comes down to? Am I going to serve God or am I going to serve me? That's the big choice. And you know what? You probably have to make that choice every day. But it starts making that first choice and saying, you know what? Starting today, with God's help, I'm going to choose His will, His way, and not my own. Make a choice. Make it a public choice, not a secret choice. Let other people know. Say, look, you know what? I'm choosing to give my life to Jesus Christ, that I'm going to serve Him. If it's in sickness, hopefully my sickness I'll use for the glory of God. If it's in some other type of trial or trouble, I'm going to use that for the glory of God. But whatever God gives me, I want to use it for His glory. How about Job? Job. There was He, He had made a choice. Matter of fact, Job lost his wealth. Job lost his health. And Job lost his, his children and you could almost say his wife for a short time. She said to him, why don't you just curse God and die? Now you know what? That man must have been at a very low point in his life. But through that he came and he said he trusted the Lord. He had already made this choice up before. When things were going good. He said, though he slay me, if God decides to kill me, I'll trust him in that. He knows what's best. Job had established his heart, had he not? Job's heart, he wasn't saying, well, you know, while things are going good, while I have power over unclean spirits, and I can feed the multitudes, I'm on God's side. But when things go south and things go bad and I lose all my money, I lose my health and I lose my relationships, well, then I'm going to have to reconsider if this is the God I really want or not. Or I need to find another one. No, you have to, your heart needs to be established. What about the children of Israel as they wandered through the wilderness? Was their heart established? No, they murmured and complained when things were bad. And they were happy with God when things were good. When they had... When they had the manna in the beginning, oh, this is good. After a while, they're like, oh, we hate this stuff. And then they said, give us some meat to eat. Then they had a bunch of quail. Hey, this is good. And then they got, the, the quail happened to be diseased or something like that, and they got all the sickness from it. And they grumbled and complained against God through their trials. Constantly, when tribulation came, instead of making them sweeter, they got sour. First thing to do is make a choice. Choose today. Desire God's will in Romans, as we were saying in Romans 8.28. 
Uh, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Are you called for the purpose of Jesus Christ? Is that what your calling is? Or do you have a different calling? If your calling is for Jesus Christ, it will all things will work together for good for that purpose. Because that's what God's purpose is, to point all men, or to have the Holy Spirit point all men to Jesus Christ. It's for the glory of God. And Jesus Christ will bring all men to God the Father. Number three, don't have a hard heart. I think one of the reasons when things go well for us for so long, we expect it. I expected things to keep going good. And it makes our heart a little bit hard. We're not ready for some difficulties. We take God's blessings for granted. You know what? If you're taking God's blessings for granted, you have a hard heart. A hard heart. I think that's one of the things that happened to the disciples. They were, had power over unclean spirits. They got to feed the 5,000. And then they went on to a head-on wind. And they had to row all night. And they ran some difficulties. And Jesus said, you guys have a hard heart. Your heart has hard, been hardened. You didn't consider the miracle of the loaves. Offer yourself tonight for God's purposes. Lazarus did. He wanted to be a witness for others. God needs volunteers to say, God, use me any way you need to to reach the lost. I'll take a sickness if it'll reach the lost. I'll take a problem if it'll help reach the lost. Because that's what God's purpose is. That's what his plan is. That's what's dearest to his heart, is to see lost souls reconciled unto him. Some little basics. You need to do the basics. Okay? Are you doing the basics? Don't expect to do the big stuff if you're not doing the basics. The basics are, do you read your Bible every day? Do you open this book that, that is God's Word every day and read a verse out of it? A verse! You could do that. Maybe you could read ten verses. Alright? But you know what? If you just started every day, just read some in there. Just make it a basic daily habit. Prayer, that's great. Prayer is good. All right, but you need to know who you're praying to. Many people pray to a God that they've imagined in their mind. You need to make sure you're praying to the God of this book, the God of the Bible. And be faithful in little things. In Luke 16.10 it says, He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. But if you're not faithful in the little things that God gives you every day to do, you won't be ready when the big stuff comes. You'll fall apart. You'll get bitter against God because you don't do the basics. There's no room for complaining like Jonah did. And number seven, sometimes uh, the purpose for suffering is to make you like Jesus Christ. Last verse to look at is in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7. 1 Peter 1, 7. This is God's view. This is God's view on suffering, difficulties. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, it, that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found to the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Your suffering is more valuable than pure gold. God says, it's better to suffer than to have gold. Now, we don't think that way. Peter and John, they understood it. They, when they had to suffer, they said, well, we count it uh, glory to suffer. They, they thought, man, we're not really worthy to suffer for the name of Jesus. I don't care what your suffering is. I don't care if it's someone else being mean to you. You can suffer for Jesus Christ in that trouble. I don't, it doesn't matter what it is. Whatever you're suffering, offer it to God and say, God, I want to take this patiently for you. I don't want to be complaining about it. 
in uh, 2 Timothy 